here at the Cryo Castle Medieval Festival and I brought the Shadlings along with me this time. Say hi kids. Good day mate. My parents brought me here when I was this big and literally it was at Cryo Castle that I got to hold my very first real sword. That's me there right in the middle and unfortunately this photo has been cropped but there is a sword I'm actually holding in my hands it's just out of frame and that was the first sword I ever held and it definitely had a long lasting impact on me because you know it's not like I've uh, been interested in swords ever since. Now they're also doing like this full medieval festival which is going to be also heaps and heaps of fun so we're going to go on in and have a great time. The first thing that we did during the festival was to go have a look at the many reenactors. There are heaps of reenactment groups that set up their individual displays, others there to answer questions or to give discourses, even performances. They're all really passionate, very friendly, and it's just a great time. And one of the things that I love about the reenactors is the level of effort they go into for the highest level of historical authenticity that they can get. It becomes really immersive and also a great resource to learn about this period in time. How are ya? Very well yourself. So we're just doing around, we're making kind of a vlog and just uh, uh, before the crowds get here everything. Awesome. So this is your blacksmith work? Some historical stuff. Mm -hmm. I take a lot of inspiration from fantasy. I love that kind of stuff as well. Same. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I've got some magic wands, I've got... Oh, I love it. From the gentleman down there, all yeah. the way around, we're the historical mm -hmm. artisans. Oh, so historical we all artisans. We pretty much demonstrate our craft. We all make all our own stuff from mm -hmm. scratch. We've all got our own trades. And awesome. Yeah. It's great. Well, it's good to meet you. I hope you have a good day. You too. Enjoy your day, guys. Thanks. Look at this. This is great. So you made these axe heads? I made everything you can see here. Look at this lovely bearded axe. Beautiful. And see, this is what, like, one of the ways you know you can always tell um, an actual proper historical axe is the size is functional and practical. You can actually use it. Like the fantasy ones, they ramp it up so much bigger. Uh, but this is a great example of functional historical axes, which and, I love. And all of these are made the traditional method. So. Mm -hmm. The analog for the iron is the mm -hmm. mild steel. Yep, yep. And a high carbon steel bit forge welding. Gorgeous. So you've got sort of some of the axes in process of being made here to show them as, as an example. Mm -hmm. This is an unusual one. Yes. If you have a look at the Bayou Tapestry. You'll see when they're chewing mm. planks. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so, and you actually have the angle on it, which means it's easier to hew. But so how, see how this is offset? So it's like that. That means you can get the flat of the blade closer to the wood as you're hewing and your hands don't get in the way. Yeah. And so, absolutely. And you, you can see the, you know, the hammer marks on it and everything. And there's your baker's mark as well. Yes. You're on the blacksmith right there. Absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Morning! How are you doing? I'm good, and you? Always good, thank you. Awesome. Oh, I like these books. This is genuinely brilliant. I like, look at this. So you were part of the historical artisans, I heard. Correct. Correct. And you're from Sydney? No, no? from Victoria. From Victoria? This is... Beautiful. And so you made all this. this? Is all your leather work? Yep, it's all handcrafted by me. This is Count Laszlo leather, and they might be available online soon. I'm, we might have to come back and buy some stuff. That, it's great to meet you guys. Yeah, you too. Thanks. All right, I will see. Shad. Shad. Yes. Shad. Shad. I know you. Yes. <laughs> right. I know from the woods. Yeah. Well, I actually live in Victoria, so. I need to get one of these tents. Let me know in the comments where you can get tents like that. I know I should just Google it, but I'm sure you guys know sources. Of course, on top of the reenactors and the kind of dedicated craftsmen that are among them, you also have dedicated retailers. There was a showing from the store of Science and Swords, the Medieval Shop, and others as well. And it was also pretty cool to see some other items. There's some cool swords, but one in particular, well, let's just say it stood out to me. There it is, ah! Oh. <laughs> now, would you say this is your favorite store? Oh <laughs> my goodness, this, this warms my heart. Look at this, they're selling Imperius. That is absolutely brilliant. And of course we have the wonderful Rosalie. How are you? 
I'm good, thank you, Chad. And today we're talking about uh, hygiene and medieval lady cleanliness thing. That is awesome. We have hair powders, we have uh, scented <laughs> bath waters, we have reproduction of museum items mm -hmm. used for those things. Because uh, this is one of those areas where there's so many misconceptions, where medieval people, they're all stinky, they never bath, and it could be further from the truth. Sorry. Hello. I am. <laughs> That's me, I'm a huge fan. Oh, it's good to meet you. Because I think I saw one of your videos where you're in New South Wales, wasn't it? Yeah, so the Abbey Medieval Festival. Um, yeah. That's one of the bigger ones in Australia, but uh, we don't have many festivals here in Victoria. And, yeah. and so when I saw that this one was happening, I was like, well, I'm definitely coming. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the greatest things that I love about uh, medieval festivals and then the reenactment groups is that across history you have such a broad and wide range of, of time that you're trying to cover and to try and understand all the information from you're looking on, on uh, you know fifth century all the way to the 15th century okay there is so much information that for me, I, I can't absorb it all. But with the reenactment re groups, they pick a period that they then hyper focus on and become actually quite versed in them. And they end up knowing heaps of really detailed information for the specific area that they're reenacting in. And as a result, they're a wealth of information. And so you can come here to each individual kind of reenactment group area and just ask them questions. And they have all this information that they've personally researched for their own impressions and what they're re sorry, recreating. And uh, that's one of my favorite things. I love it. How are you, gentlemen? Jet. Yes. <laughs> nice to meet you, bud. Good to meet you guys. You would be uh, 15th, 16th century by your dress. 15th. 15th? Yeah. And Later half of 15th. Awesome, awesome. These are uh, gorgeous doublets. Like, look, look at how great these guys look. <laughs> Get custom fit as well. And that's one thing. Like, in this period, they really like the custom fit stuff. Look at the, these doublets, okay? They were short. Or, there were some longer, you know, garments that they wore, but they really loved the shorter old, stuff as well. Older old gentlemen tend to wear <laughs> longer doublets and mm -hmm. higher hose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sort of style. Younger men would like the, yep. like, nice and short, and they'd, Obviously, the, the hose would be tight to show off the calves. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, especially if you look at, say, like uh, going a little further forward, the lanch necks. Like, they were <laughs> the, the big puffy sleeves and the and the, the tight hose so they could show off their feet. It's great. Like, like, fashion was so rich yeah. in that period. They had color. Yes. Had look color. at the color. Like, this, absolutely. This the colors you should see. It's, um, I think uh, it was one of the biggest disappointments the move recently, The Last Duel. Yeah. The colors like pastel was the best you got. It's like, no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> colors, reds and oranges and just stupid stuff because it was... It was uh, mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, what's your reenactment group? So Company St. Christopher, mm -hmm. um, we essentially do nightly training mm -hmm. um, plus, you know, some other camp activities and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. all, the, all these tents are hand-built by us as well. So I did all the carpentry for all this stuff. Really? The benches. Um, yeah, we just like, we like making stuff that's, that's yeah, mm -hmm. 15th century. Also, guys, hope you have a great day. It's great meeting you. Yeah? Thank you. Great to meet you too. Likewise. No worries. We'll see you. Oh, I'll see you on YouTube. Yes, that's very likely. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I like the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. One of my absolutely favourite things that happens at these medieval festivals is meeting fans. If there's any place in which I might end up getting recognised, well, you could imagine it is at medieval festivals like this. This was such a joy at the Abbey Medieval Festival, running into so many people that wanted to come up and say hi. And of course, this happened as well at the Croyal Castle Medieval Festival. Mate, I'm a subscriber. Oh, oh good to meet you. Also, surely that's not here. <laughs> no, no, it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? It's an honour to meet you. It's an honour to meet you. What was your name? Now, I never thought I'd ever be in that position where someone just meeting me brightens their day. That is crazy. It's hard to process, honestly, but the fact that it means something to them, that's what gives me the fulfilment. A lot of people is just a, hey, I recognise that guy, I want to say hi to him, and that is just brilliant. It's a lot of fun being able to just brighten someone's day by them saying hello. But then there are also those people where it actually means a lot, and they're kind of nervous approaching. And so when that happens, I, I try and go out of my way to be approachable and make that meeting as friendly as possible. And so if you ever do see me at one of these events, please do not hesitate to come up and say hi. Feel free to ask for a selfie. I take that as a compliment, a uh, kind of strange one, because again, I never thought I'd be the type of person that people want to take a photo with but the fact that people do I take it as a flattering compliment and will always be happy to oblige. I know what I'm wearing is not 100% historically accurate okay I like to kind of do the blend where I like my fantasy to be to be more historically inspired and that's exactly this would kind of be my more noble adventuring kit what I'm wearing here 
of course the back scabbard you might notice as well and there's might there's some anachronistic kind of mishmashing i get that completely if i was part of the reenactment group usually they have very high standards of very strict historical authenticity and uh what i'm wearing here would most likely be rejected but what's great reenactment fairs like you can just come wear, so oftentimes there's people just wearing fantasy elf ears and things as well. And so you just wear what you like and uh, that's kind of what I'm doing here because it's fun. I just mentioned that people love to come dressed as fantasy costumes and stuff like that. We have two elves. Uh, do you have kind of a hot story and background for your characters or your impressions? Um, I am kind of dressed up as a modern Thranduil from The Hobbit. I love it, love it. And I am just a sweet little nymph from Mirkwood. Wonderful, you guys look great. It was good. Thank you for saying yeah, hi. Okay. <laughs> no worries. So it's not perfectly historically accurate, but for kind of like, you know, medieval fantasy aesthetic, Coral Castle has always been a blast. If you just have a look at like, you know, the building over there looks awesome. Actually, that building is probably more authentic than the uh, castle behind it. This building here has been used for a number of things over the years. Uh, when we first came here a long, long time ago, they have like, um, you can get medieval photos and stuff where you dress up in medieval gear, have the swords, they have like a photo backdrop and you get a family portrait basically. That was where I got to hold my first sword. It was in this building here. They've since moved that, that's in another location. You can still do it. And, um, but they have something else in here which is just basically round table room, but let's have a look. Look at this, look at this solid medieval door. I love the door. Look at these high back chairs and you actually, even with a back scabbard, sitting down, big round table, I love it. It's like, my lords, fellow knights, we have serious things to talk about and discuss. So it's interesting, uh, the guy that kind of built Crowell Castle was a huge medieval enthusiast and he had some of his own collections and some of those collections are still on display. They're, uh, it's interesting, I don't know where they came from, I don't think they're uh, essentially authentic, but I think they were reproductions that were available in the 70s and 80s. And as such you kind of see uh, you know, interesting things, like some actually look more authentic than others, but this is the type of stuff they have on display. Interesting detail. Okay? So they actually use this for events and stuff, and as a result, uh, just because common convenience, modern convenience, there's seats. Medieval chapels, no pews, okay? They stood. All right, and that is the day. As you see, everything is winding down. My kids are all tired, and so they're kind of just on their way to the car. But uh, look, it's actually been genuinely great to see uh, a medieval festival here in Victoria. We don't have a lot of them in Victoria, and one of the best, you know, seems like one of the most obvious places you want to have it is Crow Castle, which has been like a like it's been here for ages. Like I said, I came here when I was a little kid, and uh, seeing it still around sharing you know opportunity for people to just see the medieval period and uh, medieval enthusiasts to come it's actually been really really great hope you guys have had a fun time as uh, been seeing you know uh, say, uh, go around see the sites and enjoy the festival as well uh, thank you for watching and i hope to see you on the next video here on shadowversity so until that time farewell